advance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm into quantum physics and those things too, so you can imagine. Please welcome our messenger this morning, practitioner Vance Gardner. Thank you, Steve. Let me welcome everyone here today and those who are joining us online and those who are joining us in consciousness. January is the beginning of a new year in our calendar. And it's a time when we are encouraged to do something different. And I'm doing something different for the first time, which makes me think about virgins. But that's for later in this talk. <laughs> so it is my privilege and my pleasure to share these ideas with you this morning. I remember many years ago, I asked a young lady on New Year's Eve, what would we be doing to bring in the new year? She answered, she was going to church, and I was welcome to join her. No, that was not what I had in mind. <laughs> but I ended up in church, and I still remember that sermon till this day. And it was titled, Seize the land. The pastor shared that if, like Joshua and Caleb, we see the land rightly, we would focus on the positive possibilities and prosper. I suspect many of us started the year optimistically, declaring this is our year, and some of us made resolutions. If we are like Americans, by now, 36% of us would have given up on these resolutions already. And by the end of six months, most of us would have given up on them. And only about 8% of us will carry it through till the end of the year. And this is according to the University of Stratton Journal of Clinical Psychology. We are often not ready to seize the land. Jesus, the master teacher, in the parable of the sower, tells us about the different types of soil within each of us. And Irving Seal, in Learn to Live, tells us, so it is with your mind. We are different soil types giving rise to different growths within our consciousness and experience. Emerson, well, some people dispute if it's Emerson first said this, said that what lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us. The soil of mind is our awareness and embodiment of truth. And this is the land we must see by cultivating our inner space. So I'm going to share some ideas with you on how to cultivate your inner space. In other words, how to expand your awareness by practicing the presence, applying the principles, and using the power for good. I'm using the term inner space as it is used in noetic sciences, which means consciousness, and applying that knowledge to enhance our well-being and the quality of our life on this planet. Cultivate means to grow and maintain. So how do we grow and maintain our consciousness so that it is a clearer and more open channel for the divine self-givenness which is expressing and knowing itself as you, as me, and as everything? How do we develop what the Bible calls eyes that see, ears that hear, and a heart that understands. In Luke 12, 22 to 34, Jesus tells us basically how to do this. And here are some of what he shared. He said that we should not worry about our life, what we'll eat, nor about the body, or what we'll put on. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. 
And yet I say unto you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Your father knows that you need these things. But seek the kingdom of God and these things shall be added to you. For it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The kingdom of heaven is a consciousness of truth. One that recognizes that there is no separation between God and us. It is a consciousness of abundance that knows that all that is required is already given. So God's grace is our all sufficiency because, as we said earlier, things are already better. It is a consciousness of joy that recognizes a perfect universe governed by a perfect law. It is a consciousness of peace that passes all understanding, a consciousness of health that recognizes that we are perfect, whole, and complete, a consciousness of light, eyes that see only good and ears only good, a consciousness of love, a heart that understands, a consciousness of life, that knows that it is everlasting, a consciousness of right action that allows the Father within to do the work. In order to do any cultivation, a good farmer first knows he has to survey and clear his land and get it ready for planting. Similarly, we have to survey and clear the soil of our minds. We must determine what is inside of us, which is seeking to come forth, and what we have put inside of us that is hindering the best expressions of ourselves. Reverend John, in his encouragement last week, which you can find on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel, or you can listen to the audio on our website, instructed us on how to use our intuition to draw upon our inner strengths and resources, how to develop ears that hear. In clearing our soil, there are other practices that have been recommended, like emotional freedom technique, which I practice. But meditation and contemplation are required. In meditation, we can become present to our thoughts. And when we become present to our thoughts, we can recognize what are the things that are stressing us and, what, and where prayer is required. Contemplation and guided meditation focuses the mind on truth principles and thereby neutralizes the negative influences because the negative have no inherent power and only manifest in our experience if we give it attention and focus but it disappears when the truth is revealed and we see clearly. We plant our seeds with prayer. I'm going to I'm not going to give the guidelines for prayers because most of us know the steps. And if we don't know the steps, you can go to the classes and learn the steps of prayer. But I'm focusing on the bigger picture. That is the things that we must remember when praying affirmatively or giving treatment. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science of Mind, states that when we treat, we do not wish, we know. We do not dream, we state. We do not hope, we accept. We do not pray, we announce. We do not expect that something is going to happen, but we believe that it has already happened. Just like the farmer, when he's planting, when we are treating, we are working with the law, and we must work with it scientifically. 
Don't do what some hymns and teachings have suggest. That is to take your troubles to the Lord in prayer. It is better to listen to Jesus and the advice of all mixes which tell us not to worry. Don't talk defeat to yourself. And when you are praying, you are talking to yourself to bring your awareness or consciousness into alignment with omniscience, the one consciousness which knows everything which is individualized as our individual consciousness. So we turn away from the conditions and focus on the truth. We are working in the law and whatever we impress upon it manifests as our experience. In the signs of miracles, Greg Braden shows what scientific prayers does is what Amit Goswami describes as collapsing possibilities into actualities. In simple language, this means that the consciousness of realization that what is described is, that what is desired is believed and accepted as already done reveals it to the extent that it is embodied. <laughs> that the consciousness of realization, that means that what is desired is believed and is accepted as already done and you embody that, that is what brings forth the manifestation of that desire. Bryden showed a video of practitioners facilitating the healing of cancer in real time through the power of realization and visualization. Mary Manning Morrissey told a story of the healing of her experience of cancer. Mary said that a practitioner asked her if she, Mary, believed that the experience of cancer could be healed. And Mary said that she did not know. The practitioner then asked her if she, Mary, believes that the practitioner believes that the, con that the cancer could be healed. And she said yes. Of course, the result was the cancer was healed. And we know that because we saw Mary here. Twice she spoke from this very podium. Just like the good farmer who knows, <coughs> sorry, he's planting crops and fields, not sowing seeds, who sees orchards and crops to harvest when he's sowing. So when we pray, we pray from the consciousness of the kingdom of heaven, already realized as the good we desire. We pray from the consciousness of feeling love, peace, abundance, or the good we desire. And we know that without the feeling, our words have no meaning and have no power. So we pray knowing that it is already done, as it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. The good farmer also knows when to sow, and he's not going to sow his seeds in times of storm or unfavorable weather. So we should know when to pray. I haven't forgotten about the virgins, and they help us to pray effectively. The five wise virgins who didn't fall asleep. The five foolish virgins represent our five physical senses which tells us about conditions. But the five wise virgins represents our inner senses of truth perception, which helps us to impress the truth upon the subconscious while our senses are sleeping, unable to block our prayers with doubt and unbelief. So pray just before you go to sleep, especially a prayer of gratitude for the good already given, and give thanks when you wake for receiving your good. There is someone who has helped me to understand the science behind prayer and manifestation, 
and he's a noetic scientist, Norman Nair, who I'll ask us to share with you. Thanks, Vance, and good morning to my Temple family. With introduction as a scientist, I'd better have something scientific to say. And as it turned out, I do. I want to speak to you briefly on the scientific law of vibration and its implication for our lives. Simply put, the law of vibration states that everything in this universe vibrates at a certain frequency. And these frequencies set up a resonance with other energy bodies, if you will, that matches that frequency. We see many examples of this law operating in our everyday world. Virtually every adult in Jamaica have a cell phone. And I should know that. After all, I work with Lyme. <laughs> and if you are not with the Better Network, please, please do so. As a result, there is a sea of communication signals vibrating at different frequencies, and yet you are connected only to the person you have dialed. You have connected to or resonated with that single frequency matching that telephone number. The same takes place when you tune in your radio frequency to a particular radio station, like selecting the 94.5 FM frequency, which will only give you RJR. This is also true of your television stations, and we can go on and on with a list of examples. We are also vibrating at a particular frequency. And it's through our thoughts, feelings, and actions that we send out our vibration into the universe in which they are matched to like frequencies. Through the law of attraction, what you put out always come back to you in the case of the radio, as in the case of the radio station example I mentioned earlier. So what's the relevance of all this? It simply means that as I radiate positive emotions, with a, which is a higher frequency, I'm attracting the energy and circumstances which are positive and in alignment with my good feelings. Also, the opposite is true, especially when you consider the negative emotions of fear. So as you look to transform your lives, the good you seek is dependent on you radiating positive emotions to attract these conditions in your life. This is truly what it means when they say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. This then is urging us to move ourselves into vibrational alignment with our God self, a higher state of consciousness or a higher state of being. Like with many things, it is easier said than done. Earlier, Vance shared a number of spiritual practices, including EFT, prayer and meditation, that will help to elevate us to the higher vibrational frequencies, or what he termed cultivating the inner space. There are indeed many other practices, like listening to music, dancing, and the list goes on, that will achieve the same purpose. And in all this, it is for you to be continually aware of what you think, feel, and do, as it's helped to establish your vibrational alignment and hence your point of attraction. And by the way, this is a continuous process. So as you seek to tune your vibrational frequencies or cultivate your inner space, you should note the following. You must be careful with the comments you make in jest. Make them enough times and before long you set up a vibrational alignment in which your joke becomes your outcome. There are no cosmic jokes. Words are words and feelings are feelings. 
The universe merely gives us what we are focusing on. Two, equally important is not allowing the opinions and criticism of others to influence your vibration. Surround yourself with doubters and their doubting vibration will pull your vibrational frequency down. Without a match, you cannot attract. Do not let others kill your dream. Three, focus on the solution, not the problem. The problem only keeps you vibrating at the frequency of the problem, and you end up experiencing more of it as you attract those conditions in your life. Finally, it is imperative to find out what beliefs have been running your lives. It is these beliefs that have created your dominant vibrational frequency, and it is this frequency that needs to be matched with whatever it is that you are trying to manifest in your life. This is such a liberating view, to know that your life experience is truly up to you. Namaste. Diligence. We need to consistently do our spiritual practices of affirmations, meditations, visualization, and praying affirmatively. Usain Bolt couldn't run 9.58 without consistent, diligent practice. The only difference between you and the greatest being to walk among mankind is the extent to which you cultivate the power of your mind. There's a power for good in the universe and we can use it. In Science of Mind, we believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature, and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. I attended my company's blast off and awards function earlier this month, and I wanted to hear the speaker because I knew I was scheduled to speak today. He was good. I mean, like Reverend John and Joel Osteen type of good. <laughs> <laughs> he told the story of an 11-year-old boy who had a serious asthma attack at school. The school was New Providence, Primar New Providence Primary. He was rushed next door to the chest hospital, but the doctors proclaimed it was too late. There is nothing they could do because he is dead. The boy's mother started to create some serious disturbances in the place and went, bad, went on bad, as we would say in Jamaica. She then called her mother to tell her the news, and the grandmother replied, I lied to my tell, my grandson is dead. The speaker then told us that the grandmother told him she immediately started to declare the truth about the child and through a series of affirmations and denials for about 15 minutes straight. She never stopped until she was convinced in her mind that her grandson, spirit, had returned to his physical body. The hospital at that time had become fed up with the behavior of the child's mother. And they wanted to convince her that her son was dead. So they carried her to show her her son's body. And then someone shouted out, he's alive, he's alive. The speaker, Apostle Clifton Campbell, says he knows the story is true because he was that little boy. So turn to the person beside you and affirm with the consciousness of God, we can do all things. We can do, we can do all things.
There is one power in the universe. We are immersed in it, and it is within us. So in closing, please just center yourself and relax and go within to your inner space. Be still. And know that you are God. Namaste.